Hey everybody, I wanted to thank everyone that has subscribed, liked, shared any of my videos up to this point. I posted a video roughly six months ago of my full van build. As of now, it's, it's, it's a little over a million views and I've got about 1,700 comments on it and I've gotten a, a bunch of different comments on, on asking me questions on certain how to do this or what do you do here or and I answer everybody and I'm very thankful for everybody asking and inquiring my expertise which I actually don't even think I'm an expert but I want to appreciate everybody asking anyways so I've decided to do a build series videos and it's going to be five different phases phase one through five and each one is going to tackle a different step of the of the van building process why am I doing this I already have a build video out there that build video really doesn't explain on how I did things. So I'm going to put this out there and I'm gonna share with everybody on not only how I did this build, but I'm going to say what I could have done for more expensive or even less expensive. And I'm gonna give you suggestions. You will see sections of my of my van build. I will insert clips into uh, my, 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 my build process. I'll also show you with my GoPro here other uh, cut-ins of underneath things and what I want to show you behind the finishes and what's going on there. So uh, there's going to be a lot going on, a lot of information. You may even have questions, so please comment below if you do have some questions. I'm more than happy to help you. I'm not getting paid by GoPro, by the way. I'm not sponsored by them at all. I'm not a GoPro guy, so uh, I'm actually not sponsored by anybody. If I do mention a product of some sort, I'm not getting paid by them, like Dometic Fridge, I have a Dometic Fridge. I'm not getting paid by Dometic on any of this stuff as of yet. If my sponsorship does change, I will put it in the description below a sponsor, but I am not getting sponsored by any of the products that I have. I'm not getting sponsored by Home Depot, which I'm going to reference a lot in. By the way, you should probably know that name well, because you're going to make that your second home, no pun intended. Home Depot is going to be like, everything to you let's get started with phase one and then i'll release the next phases two through five every single day uh for the next four today plus another four days from now okay let's get going okay phase one Phase one is probably the most boring phase because I'm really not gonna show, oh, I'll show you a little bit of clips. Um, but it is probably the most important phase of the entire build. You can actually do phase one without even having the van, but that's uh, pretty much what phase one is all about. Uh, phase one is, I'm gonna be reading off of my tablet, by the way, that's the only reason why I have that in my hand. Uh, if you wanna see my review on this tablet, I'll put the link up on the card. My first question is why are you doing this? Why are you converting a van? Are you doing it because of what I do? I built it more of in a tiny home, a tiny home on wheels that I travel around. I live in Los Angeles mostly. I do it to not pay rent. I do it to have a sense of freedom. I like I like to, I, I'm, I'm pursuing stand-up comedy and writing and and, and other endeavors, so uh, are you doing it because of that? I didn't, I wasn't forced into living into a van. I wanted to live this way. So are you more like me and you want to build it more of a home? Or are you more of like a weekend warrior that wants to just go out on the weekends and uh, adventure, uh, use it as like a class B motor home type situation? There's companies like Zion and Winnebago that sell uh, class B's this size on the same chassis on a, on a Ram Promaster. There's other, oh, there's a million companies out there, um, but those are the big names. Those will run anywhere between ninety to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And then you have custom van builders that will usually start around fifteen twenty thousand, and they'll go all the way up to sixty thousand. Then with that, that's without purchasing the van. So you're looking at another thirty thousand on the cost of the van. You have to take all this into effect, and that's just a van. So you have to ask yourself, why are you doing this? Why do you want to do it? Are you forced into it? Are you forced to live out of a Toyota Prius? Are you forced to buy a van like this? And are you maybe getting a Chevy Express van? This is kind of leading into my next question. But why are you doing this? Are you, you keep on asking yourself that, uh, do you want to do this? Is this something that you have a dream of doing and you just want to go with it the very once you answer why you're doing it it'll set up everything else that i'm going to ask what type of van do you want 
For instance, I wanted to stay stealth because I'm parked in a city and I wanted to be in the city. So I wanted to look like a work van. Now I'm in Los Angeles. There's a whole bunch of these vans around here because there's a lot of filming equipment and things like that. So I wanted a van that would blend in with my surroundings. Hence why I got a Ram ProMaster. I figured it looks very work vanish. If you follow me on Instagram, I actually posted a picture recently of me in an RV parked side by side or front to back. And uh, the girl was telling me that she gets hassled all the time. I've never been hassled in my van. So if you're looking to go stealth, you may want to consider that. Maybe a Chevy Express van, maybe converting in a, just like a, a van van, a, who knows, whatever your thoughts are, that's what you need to go with. So what kind of van are you getting? Are you gonna get new or are you gonna get used? Uh, some vans that I've seen out there, also, I really want to see a step truck. If you don't know what a step van is, I'll put a, a picture of it right now. A step van is like a UPS truck or a FedEx truck or things like that. You know, I want to see one of those bad boys converted and I want to know how good they are. I'm not considering it, but I think it would be cool to do. I follow a couple people on Instagram that have converted their box trucks. It's so cool. So maybe that's your thing. That's your thing and that's your that's what you need to do to make that decision. What are you going to do? New, use, what type of van, and why are you doing this? My other piece of advice is to go and test drive every single van or truck that you are interested in. Me personally, I was between the Ram ProMaster and the Sprinter, and I went with the ProMaster, obviously. The Sprinter was right there, neck and neck, and I test drove both. I like the price and I like the room of the ProMaster better, so I went with the ProMaster. Again, test drive everything. Do you want diesel or gas? That is another thing you have to ask yourself. I went with gas because I, I thought that I'd be traveling into, or I might still travel into Mexico and Central America. Mexico I, I doesn't carry the type of diesel fuel that needs to be in the ProMaster's diesel. I don't know what type of diesel it is. I just read somewhere that if you go into Central America, they don't they don't carry that diesel, that type of fuel. So the different types of vans, you have a cargo, you have a step truck, you have a box, you have a minivan, a bus, all right? After you've picked all of that stuff, then you can start getting into the fun things. Once you've picked your van or your truck or your bus or whatever it may be, now you wanna say, okay, you can maybe measure things out or even beforehand, once you've decided what you're getting, you can look up dimensions, that's what I did. I decided on the ProMaster, and I didn't purchase it for three months, but during that three month period, I went in and I, I got the dimensions of everything and I started laying out the van and how I was going to lay it out. I spent three to four months just on research and layout alone. I'll put a, I'll put a picture of my layout right here for you so you can see. I kept it rough and I advise everybody else to keep it rough because you are going to change 117 things as your build is happening. I changed at least that many things during my build. If you actually look closely on my layout, my slide out table, which I'm leaning on right now, it looks like it comes out of the closet because I didn't know how far out the closet was going to come from the wall if it was going to give me enough room. I had to wait until I got into the van and started building and started measuring everything out until I actually realized, no, I got plenty of space between the bench and where I sit and everything else. I didn't know the dimensions of comfortability. One of my pieces of advice to you is to test drive or rent actual mobile homes, class Bs, if you're interested in that, or a box truck, there's plenty of people that are renting their their uh, self-built RVs or self-built vans, whatever they may be. I know there's a lot of people out there. I know there's some apps out there that are renting these things, and you can go and test drive and see what you like inside for a layout. For instance, for me, I knew I wanted to have, I point to my bed, you can't see it. I knew I wanted to have a bed that was a bed and I didn't have to convert it. I, I actually was in a class B before I had this one and they had to convert their bed every single day or they had to pull it out like a couch style and then to put the cushions in. If I had to do that every day, it would really irritate me. Now, I'm living out of this full time, so I knew I wanted a bed there and, and, and stage. I, I did not want to convert a bed. Again, I'm living out of it full time, so I designed this layout specifically for my needs. You wanna sketch different layouts. You wanna, I did mine on a free version of Google SketchUp. I don't know if they still do that anymore. There's plenty of free versions out there because I wanted to see it three-dimensionally. You can sketch even in three-dimensional. I'll even show you some sketches what I have 
two-dimensionally. This is just a sketch of my van right here. And as you can see, it's very simple. That's a, obviously a bird's eye view or looking down on it. A, a floor, this is a floor plan. Very simple. Now, I'm gonna show you one that I just did just out of the, like just off the top of my head. This was just off the top of my head of maybe something I might do for an adventure van down the road. Again, this is just a thought. You know, as you can see, this would be more of an adventure van. The reason uh, the, the two benches are here the two benches are here because there would be a table there that would convert into a bed. I don't know, I, and to have it all the way flowing through would be nice. You know, I have this little counter here. This kind of looks like somebody I know named Priscilla. Um, I think I did another one. I did, but it was weird. Oh, I have like the shower in the back of the van. This is just another layout that I was just, I was just sketching. I was just seeing what well, I advise you all to do that as well. Just to sketch and see what you come up with. I also designed a lot of my, my layout around the products that I knew I wanted. I knew I wanted the two batteries that I have that are two 200 amp hour gel batteries by Renergy. Again, I'm not going to be paid by anybody, so I'm not trying to promote them, but the Renergy batteries are big and I knew I needed to house them somewhere. So they're underneath the bench I'm sitting on right now. I also know that I didn't need to vent them. So this is all things that you kind of have to think about during your layout. For instance, my brother's doing a build right now and he bought a three-way fridge. A three-way fridge is DC power, AC power, and propane. The propane will kick in if you have no power to, to power your refrigerator. The propane will kick on, but you need to vent the propane. So he had to cut holes in the side of his van to vent out that, that air, just in case that propane kicks on. That's something I didn't want to do because I didn't want to be stealth. I went with a Dometic fridge that can run off of DC power and it's I wanted a, fr a fridge freezer combo and the only one they had was the one that I got. So it unfortunately it is open from the top but I made it work. I slid it out, I saw different vans that did it that way and I liked how they did it. I may change my fridge in the future, I don't know. I knew I wanted this slide out table so I, I, you know, I didn't know how I was gonna do it I just knew that I, I wanted it there, and eventually when we got to that point of the build, you figure everything out. I knew I wanted the closet here. I wanted to almost have my bed separate than my than the rest of my area. I, so I knew I wanted the batteries. I knew I wanted the certain charge controller and the inverter that I wanted. Now these are all big, big items, and I knew I needed to stage them properly in the van to have them all run the wires running properly and things like that. So I needed to keep electrical on one side and water on the other. So I had to think about that as well. Also, my toilet, where was I gonna put my toilet? These are all things that you might wanna start thinking about yourself when you start wanting to do your own DIY self-build van. If you're gonna have a bathroom, how big is your bathroom gonna be? Is it going to be a bathroom that converts into a larger size? Are you, where are you gonna put all of your clothing? You know, is your storage easily accessible? Do you have more of a trunk space like mine is under my bed or do you have upper cabinets? Uh, roof vents, oh, by the way, if you have roof vents and you have solar panels, don't go through a solar panel with your roof vent because that's almost pointless. So you gotta make sure that you have your, your roof configuration correct. Everything that needs to be asked, I'm asking you right now, I'm not trying to be a douche about it, but I'm trying to tell you these are the things you have to think about while before you're doing a build. The other phases will kind of go over all of the other uh, things that you need to do. Right now, these are all the questions that you should be asking yourself. And you're not gonna be able to answer these questions in a day or night, and it's not maybe a week, a month. Remember, it took me three months to answer all these questions. That I, and I think I went through, I think, three or four different layouts, and I even sent it out to my family and friends and said, which layout do you think is the best? And they actually all picked this one. They actually all like this one. Um, and I, I second-guessed myself maybe half a dozen times on whether I was gonna go with the layout that I'm currently in right now. Now, I know a lot of you have said that you love my layout and you actually wanna copy it or even, uh, and uh, go ahead and take my layout, I don't care. Uh, you've asked me for blueprints, I wish I had them. I don't have them. I'm sorry, I don't have blueprints to this because the only sketch I have is the one that I put up on the screen earlier. I'll put it up there again right now. I'm sorry, I just don't have blueprints because you build as you go when you're doing a van build. If I was a professional builder and you were handing me $50,000 you know, plus a van, and I was to do your build for you, then yes, I'd probably make, you know, drawings and sketches or blueprints and, and have it all three-dimensionally exactly. But 
we're DIYers, we don't do it that way. So if you are a DIYer and you're doing it this way, you know, you want to consider that uh, you're gonna have a lot of uh, trial and error through this entire process, so just remember that. Okay, I told you that phase one was going to be a little tedious and a, a little bit uh, little bit annoying to listen to me, and I also am very adamant about it being the most important phase because you can't move on to phase two through five without knowing what kind of van you're getting, what the layout may be, what products you wanna use, what companies you're gonna go with with the products, things like that. These are questions you almost kinda wanna ask yourself before going into that. I'd make a list of everything you wanna use, write it down, write down the price, write down your budget, write everything down because it'll help you, it'll strategize your build and it'll make your build a thousand times easier, I promise you that. So if you are looking at doing it that way, please, I advise you to write everything down. I advise you to sketch out as many as you can. I advise you to throw out uh, all the sketches to your friends and family. I advise you to go out there and test drive uh, different types of vans or trucks or buses or things like that. Go to festivals and see what you need to see. All right, so that is it for phase one. I will be releasing phase two tomorrow. I will give uh, all the details that I can for phase two. So phase two is gonna be covering the rattle trap, the insulation, flooring, and the roof vent. That's a lot to cover, so please stay tuned for phase two, and you'll, I'll see you tomorrow.